Now for this week's regional roundup. Environmentalists are shocked by a series of savage dog attacks on baby seals at Bowen Heads. Parents in the Geelong area have been reminded that the new law on supplying alcohol to minors is now in effect. The law now makes it illegal to supply young people with alcohol in private homes without parental permission. And at the annual general meeting of the Geelong and District Football League, Neville Whitley, OAM, was reappointed unopposed as president for a further two-year term. The league remained in a positive financial position, posting a profit of $238,000 for the year ended September 30, 2011. That's our regional roundup for tonight. Ron Hutchinson was a legendary Australian jockey for 37 years, excelling in Australia, Europe and Asia. News Geelong met up with a former champion at the recent Breesies Gold Cup Day race meeting at the Geelong Racing Club. Ron, you've had a wonderful, wonderful career and yet you're still involved in the world of racing. Ah, uh, well now, Graham, now I've, I'm, I'm out of it now, really. I've left it to my uh, younger son, Pete. He's a, he's a jockey and I've got a, my eldest son, Raymond, who's a veterinary surgeon down in Mornington. So uh, they're, they're carrying on, or uh, carrying the flag now. But, uh, you know, I've had, I've had a, over the years I've had a great time at racing and I've been, a, been absolutely marvellous. And in the world of AFL football, you're uh, an old... Footscray Football Club fan. Well, Graham, I came from Maryville, so I was brought up in the days of Charlie Sutton and uh, and uh, Jack Collins and those. Here. In fact, Jack Collins and I sat at the same uh, desk at school when we were going to the Powell Street State School. So, you know, I've known them for quite a, a long time, and and of course, you know, as the years have gone on, uh, Footscray has been the club that I support. Although, you know, Geelong, of course, they're they're too good at the moment. The Geelong Racing Club has certainly shown a lot of improvements over recent years, particularly with the implementation of the synthetic track. Your thoughts on that, Ron? Oh, it's been a godsend, really, because, as you say, uh, with the, the new track, uh, like uh, any races that uh, look like are being abandoned or put off, you know, with this new synthetic track, it must be great for the clubs and uh, a bit more uh, security, really. So it's good. And you're seeing uh, racing, we're seeing racing take some significant step forwards, uh, particularly again in the spring carnival with internationals coming over yet once again year after year. Absolutely, you know, sort of, uh, and it'll even get bigger and better as far as the, now that the friendships start to uh, have the taste of success and the prize money that's, uh, that's being offered for these overseas horses, you know, you're going to get the, uh, you know, much better, uh, better horse, although, as a, as a saying, the, you know, uh, American and the last Melbourne Cup winner there, there'd be a lot better horses over there than, uh, than in France and what uh, they are, you know. Um, take, your, take your memories back to the Arc de Triomphe in your day. Yeah, well, of course, I rode in the Arc de Triomphe uh, several times, and in fact, I rode uh, a couple of seconds a horse called Salvo and uh, Bel Marino, a New Zealand horse that I ran second in the Arc on uh, him way back in uh, 1977. So uh, he was a great horse, a very good horse, and uh, he did very well when he was in um, in, in, in Europe. And uh, actually, I rode him four times. Uh, he uh, won his first start in England, and then he ran second in the Arc. He then he uh, went to uh, uh, Italy, he won a race in Italy, uh, but unfortunately I, I lost the race on objection. And uh, then he went to America and he ran fourth in the Washington International Stakes. So he was a very, very good horse. Thank you very much, Ron Hutchinson. The first of two W League soccer games was held at Simmons Stadium last weekend when the Melbourne Victory defeated the Newcastle Jets to maintain its position in the top four. News Geelong spoke with Geelong's own Laura Speranovic after the match. 2 1 win at home, what can you ask for? What more can you ask for? Yeah. Keeps you in the final four and back here at Skilt, oh sorry, at uh, Cadinia Park, Simmons Stadium for the footballers, uh, in a fortnight's time against Brisbane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're just preparing ourselves from that. Next week we've got Perth Glory away, so you get that away and then we'll be back here in a fortnight. Well, Perth Glory down the bottom of the ladder, so you should uh, be confident even though you're playing them over there. Um, yeah, every game's tough, especially because we'll be travelling four hours, so you never know anything can happen. we just got to keep working hard and hopefully the result will come at the end of the day. 
Laura, on the hallowed turf of uh, the home of Geelong Football Club, what's it like playing soccer? <laughs> yeah, you can't ask for a better ground. It's immaculate and, yeah, very privileged to be playing on this ground. And the lady who was uh, the Golden Boot winner in uh, Premier League in 2011, uh, you still uh, got many more goals left in those legs? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully we'll see um, a few more games left of the season. Hopefully they'll show... Hopefully it'll show. And today, uh, I thought number 13, uh, young uh, Gorry, stood, stood out well, the pocket rocket. She uh, didn't stop running all day. Yeah, she's brilliant. Even at training, she never stops. So it's, it's, oh, she's so, it's great to watch her play. And a little bit stiff in the first half with a couple of offsides and a trip on the laces for Jodie Taylor. <laughs> yeah, we've got to watch the offside, but it happens. I, I guess we'll keep an uh, eye out for it the next game. And what to now? A warm down and uh, a relaxation for the evening? I think so, yeah. Thanks. Maybe back to Jan Jack for a while? Oh, if it gets hot. <laughs> it gets hot. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your game and thank you very much for your time. Melbourne Victory, Geelong's own Laura Speranovic. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. We'll see you at Simmons Stadium next Saturday week. That's right, tomorrow week, December 17 at 3pm. And now to the expected weather forecast for Geelong and a surf coast for the next six days. Tomorrow, to start off another weekend of summer, Saturday will be partly cloudy with scattered showers from the late morning. Isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening with a top of 27. Sunday will be mostly cloudy with areas of rain, easing to isolated showers around midday, clearing later in the evening. Isolated thunderstorms during the morning and an expected top of 21. Monday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers from the morning until late afternoon with a top temperature of 20. Tuesday will see isolated showers during the morning with a mostly sunny afternoon and a top of 21. Wednesday will be partly cloudy with a top of 22, while Thursday will be partly cloudy with a top of 26. Today we saw a partly cloudy day with isolated thunderstorms expected this evening with a top of 29 degrees. That's a week of weather that lies ahead. Thank you for joining us on News Geelong. To Joan Avery, happy birthday and welcome to the Cardholders Club. Remember Joan, take your time and smell the flowers. For all the team at News Geelong, have a pleasant evening, a safe weekend and a very good night. <laughs>